It's really an honor for me to, to be here today and to talk about the genesis of another world. This game was created 20 years ago, and at the time, I couldn't have imagined that it would stay in the heart of many. My objective today is to give you a clear view of the origins of a game, how things were done, and in what order, how ideas appeared, and very importantly, in what context. We also consider the periods of doubt and the obstacles I met along the way. As curious as it seems, I started to create the game without knowing what it would be. The creation of this game was an improvisation, and that was not clear at the time, but in retrospect, 20 years later, I can see a parallel with theater improvisation. Because in theater improvisation, the actors have to follow predefined rules, and they must respect them and play along with them. For another world, I set some very strong constraints, like using polygons. And also, in improvisation, we develop the story layer by layer without knowing where it is going precisely. That is what happened for another world. That's why I'd like to present the creative uh, process chronologically, if that's okay with you. So the talk will be like a diary divided in four parts. First, I will talk about the ignition, the desire that sparked the development. Then, uh, we will look at the technology behind the game, how it shaped the design, and give a solid foundation to create it. Then, I will talk about the creation of the game itself, gameplay, graphics, animation, and story. Then, publish the publishing aspects. As far as possible, I will describe the context of the creation and how the flourishing of ideas is as important as ideas themselves. First, let's brush on the context. We are in July 1989. It is the Amiga era. I'm 22 years old, <laughs> still uh, living in my parents' house. Okay, this photo was taken in 1991 at the end of the development, but in 1989, there will be no less mess, unfortunately. I had been creating various games since 1983 on various platforms like Oric One, Amstrad, and of course, Amiga. The average time to create this game was uh, from three, th three weeks to uh, six months. None has been really successful. And I had just finished creating all the graphics and animation for Future Wars, uh, which is a game designed by Paul Cuisset. And Drag Dragon Slayer was just released on Amiga, and its huge animations really impressed me. I was wondering how to do this. <laughs> this game was purely bitmap. It was running on eight floppy disks. But it, it inspired me, technically speaking, to base a 2D game on a polygon drawing technology. Why polygons? Polygons mean mo low memory usage, and therefore it, it can cover a huge part of the screen with uh, very few data. It seemed very advantageous, and I felt it could, it could open new horizons. Also, 
a new thing that came with the Amiga was the ability to connect a gen lock. What's a gen lock? A gen lock is a hardware that enables you to put a video behind the picture. And the picture that which is displayed on the screen, of course. And I had seen uh, a demo of this in a shop, and this led me to a conclusion that if I could connect, connect a video camcorder to the Amiga with this hardware, I could create realistic animation with polygons by using the classical technique of rotoscoping. Well, an ID is an ID, and it needed to, to become real to have any value. But there was one crucial question. Was it possible to draw enough polygons at the right speed? I hadn't coded for two years, and my last experience with C language was a disaster. <laughs> yes, I promise, it, it was really uh, depressing, almost. So I chose to code in assembly language, which was familiar to me, and I prototyped a routine which drew a few polygons at 60 frames per second, and on strengthening the system, uh, that reduced to uh, 20 frames per second, and that was good enough to go further. So I, I decided that the graphics unit would be polygons and polygons only. That was the constraint. This was a major turning point in the creation of a game. It was like a dogma. I was sure that polygons were the greatest thing in the world. I was, <laughs> I was obsessed by this. Polygons, how, uh, how this car would, would, would look in polygons. How would uh, a potato look in polygons? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how a quad would look in polygons? Well, something wrong. What the hell is this? Aha, uh -huh. okay. Pixigon. What's a pixigon? Hmm? It's a polygon so small that it has the size of a pixel. I was used to doing some pixel art, but dealing with the flat surfaces, surfaces was something new. The first time I used polygons to create graphics, I was spending hours and hours drawing a pixel with polygons. The clock was ticking, and months later, I was still on the first level. That was discouraging, and after coding a third of the game, I reverted to, to using some bitmap when I, I needed details for some backgrounds. But finally, the whole game use, uses only 10 bitmaps. As you see, this choice brought, brought new obstacles, especially for detailed back, backgrounds. But it opened, it opened new horizon for animation. Again, what I would create, I strictly didn't know. I can tell you, I tried, and it was a nightmare because it was too difficult to design without knowing precisely the technical limits. I just knew that I, I wanted to create a game with a cinematic feeling on a science fiction theme with a rhythm of a movie but not especially ha having a story. I mean, a well-defined scri well script. I was thinking more in terms of mood, uh, ambience, uh, bu uh, movie, but no story. Yes, because it was not the story side that interested me the most, but the rhythm and the narrative tension, which is connected, but different from a story. This is an important point. I could have said, I want to create a game where a scientist is projected 
into an unknown universe where he will meet a friend who will help, help him all along the game and sure, the hero will have red hair. And in the end, he will almost die. But I had no idea of this at the time. I was stuck. It drove me to the conclusion that the only way to solve this situation was to produce. But no specific tools for polygons existed. And I had to create the whole game system from scratch too. Let's see the tools used to create the game. There are two aspects. One, a polygon editor to edit all graphics. And the other was a homemade editor for the homemade interpreted language. This interpreted language was used to code all the game logic. The tool was uh, coded partly in GFA basic, basic and in assembly language. Basic easy to learn was used uh, to, to create the user interface since I didn't, uh, didn't need performance. The assembly language was used only for the core game engine. Let's see the graphic editor. On the bottom are all the tools. It's possible to create an object, a polygon, add a point, move a point, change its color. The idea, the idea was to code a tool where every polygon can be grouped together so that it can be easily manipulated and where each group of polygons can be grouped together again like Russian dolls. Here you can see that Lester is made of uh, several polygons, but his head is another group of polygons. There was a special color which enabled transparency. Indeed, that was a color palette trick, and it is how I uh, added some light effects. So that's for the graphic side. And then, just by hitting a key, I was able to switch from uh, the graphic editor to the code editor, which, which led us to the specific language of the game. I made the choice of, uh, of an interpreted language because in 1985, I designed this for a game called Infernal Runner. This was, uh, and this was uh, really much easier to program than in assembly language. The big advantage is that the game would be interpreted in real time, so no compiling was necessary to run the game. That was a key feature to be efficient during its creation. What is more, the connection between the two editors was even tighter. What we see on the left is the visualization of the drawing code on the right. I could move the graphics and it would, sorry, and it would modify the code and vice versa. Okay, in the graphic editor, it was also possible to run step by step a part of the program. The key, features, the key feature is that the interpreted language has a special instruction to slice the code into time block. It is the break instruction. You can see the break in is instruction here. And this is instruction pauses the code until the next game loop. And the draw func function just draws an object from the polygon editor. This way, the interpreted code itself became also an animation se sequencer. And it was possible to associate more complex code to manage all the gameplay interaction. 
The language has few instructions, very simple and, and uh, minimalism, like the assembly language, but more re readable. The problem was that no comments were possible. And uh, the variable name was like V2251. <laughs> and uh, it carried just a number and no description. So the solution I used was to note that each va variable was on paper. <laughs> and I have a full documentation. Uh, I still have it today. And uh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, without entering into details, the, the, en the, en the engine allows to run small pieces of interpreted code sequentially on separate tracks, a uh, little bit like a clip in Flash, but uh, without uh, graphics. So it was very easy. Uh, to manage timing and sequence inside the code. Hence, we have one track for character displacement, one track for, to manage the pad control, one track to uh, manage the laser shot. So I had my, my tools and the game engine. I learned their limits, like frame rate, number of colors, memory limits. And regarding the improvisation process, I accept these limits as a new constraint. So now uh, I was not lost, and, uh, and I can build the game with these, with these limits in mind. Ah, what's wrong again? OK, no common data between levels. Each time. I started a new level. I copied the previous one to keep the basic, the basics, like controls, characters, behavior, and graphics. And indeed, it was a major failure in the game development, since for every change I was making on generic things, I had to do it on all files. For example, each time Lester's behavior, behavior changed, I had to change it for the whole five le levels. And later, when I did a lot of tuning, this became a nightmare. So let's go to the game creation. The introduction was a landmark because uh, it, validate, it validated the, the use of polygons and the use of the interpreted language. And the whole scene took only 84 kilobytes. Yes, it's more. It was a way, so this introduction was a way to explore uh, the dynamic of the pictures in a cinematic style, and uh, especially the, transi the transition between cuts. And also, this was um, a way to immerse myself in the universe, which was not ex existing before. And it was the first layer of the improvisation process. Hence, I had the first stepping stone for the story. I had too much belief in rotoscoping. I, create, I created some, gr some great scenes uh, with, with it, but in the end, there are only uh, six scenes that use the technique, this technique in the, in the introduction. And the rest of the game, in, in the rest of the game, only the gun sequence and the walk and run of Lester was, was uh, made uh, with uh, this technique. I got the best result from unmade, unmade animation, like uh, the lightning sequence. Anyway, this confirmed that polygon animation was great, but rotoscoping itself was, well, a little bit too limited. The main rule I followed 
during the creation of a game was to listen my inner feeling. What do I feel right now? What does it su suggest to me? That's why doing things in chronological order made things coherent. At that moment, it was not clear, but creating a game all alone brought a feeling of loneliness, which you, you, you can uh, also find in the game. And uh, I was always trying to consider my, myself as a player of a game who knew nothing about it. Each time I was asking my, myself, what would I love to experience? And then, as a creator, how can I surprise and break my initial expectation? Surprising the player was important. Playing with the pacing was a top objective. just disappeared, and from that point, I just knew that he would be teleported into another world. But where? I thought, in the air, in free fall first, <laughs> but uh, then I thought it, it would be much more surprising and unearthly to make him appear under, underwater. which gave uh, another uh, stunning moment when he emerged on the surface of a totally unknown place that is clearly not Earth since there are two moons in the sky. <laughs> Is the Jordan there? <laughs> okay. Uh, the choice to do a 2D game came naturally. I was a big fan of Karateka on Apple II, on Apple II and that was um, a, ki a kind of game I, I felt comfortable to create, so I went this way. So what's the player doing? All gameplay activity is very traditional in many aspects. You fight, you run, you jump, you flee, you die. But the, envir the environment suggests a narrative and gives more meaning to these basic actions. Ah, the color palette. Only 16 in total, and it was very difficult to define. A whole week was needed to define the first color pal palette. Full, one week full time for 16 color. A determining choice for the atmosphere of a game. Some colors are sometimes used both for the landscape and for the character. For instance, the hero's flesh color was also used to suggest the sunset reflected on the rock. Having only 16 colors is very restrictive. You could understand my need to optimize the use of each color as each hue had multiple uses. Giving Lester dark hair would have been an easy solution. But I didn't want him to look too much like me. <laughs> yes, because I was filming my, myself to create animation and the hero was physically nearly identical to me. It was disturbing. So, I, did, I didn't want to see myself running on the screen, be, being killed by a slug or, or whatever. <laughs> so, I decided to choose a totally different color, red. Because I was sure that this color would be very useful in many pictures, and also 
um, I also wanted Lester to stand out from the backgrounds. And I will never have red hair. Only blue hair sometime. <laughs> So, during the creation of uh, this part, I defined the vocabulary used through the whole game. We will see this right now. Creating a 2D game limits the gameplay to one plane, but it gives the advantage of exploiting more freely the depth at uh, the front and the back of the scene for something else. This in order to build narrative without interrupting player activity. Here, the black beast can be seen from the beginning, so the player can start to think about it. So it's really a, a, suge a suggest suge suggestion of a story. And what happens in the background suddenly becomes real for the player. This cutscene is very short, <laughs> and can, okay. And it can, see this cutscene is very short and can be seen as punctuating, uh, as punctuating to give emphasis to a major event, which is a turning point in the pacing. So, I played with the rhythm of the action. We go from a slow rhythm before the creature arrives to a fast and a very stressful situation. With a moment of suspension when you have to backtrack. Then to reach the, the climax where an over-punctuation surprise again the player. <laughs> okay. Here we've reached the end of part one, which ends on a cliffhanger for the player, but also for myself. And regarding the improvisation process, after that point, I did not know what would happen next. I just knew that the next scene would be in a jail, but uh, the idea of giving Lester a friend hadn't come uh, to me yet. How, how this guy uh, looked under his costume, I, di I did not know. So in the jail, the first thing I did was to remove his clothes <laughs> to know uh, what he looked what he looked like and then i introduced the most important character in the game the friend he helps the player but i was still not thinking about him being a focus of a game. <laughs> you will notice that this cut is the only uh, moment where you can see uh, the body in close-up. And this picture is enough for the player to project his face on the small-sized character. As I say of, often, the real media is the player's memory and imagination. So seeing once is enough to complete the mental picture of the game universe in his mind.
Okay. I always loved the way they render laser beams in uh, Star Wars movies. And uh, they were very expressive visually with a lot of dynamism. And I always wanted to see, to see this in a game. Okay, here is how a nice idea can arise from constraints. I was thinking more uh, about the core gameplay. Something around fighting, but also uh, a means for protection. After the escape from jail, the initial idea was to progress from one shelter to uh, another to avoid shots fired by the, by the guard. It was abundant because uh, too complicated to manage because it was too complicated to manage the death. In the end, the development of defense strategy brought me the concept uh, of protective fields, which are shelters generated by the player himself. This gives, uh, this creates very interesting uh, gameplay combinations. Which lead to the plasma ball, sorry, which lead to the plasma ball, which is the third stage of weaponry, like a Swiss knife, uh, told me. And, um, where are these? In retrospect, this is one uh, aspect I'm very proud of because uh, the player has to choose from uh, different strategies. The player can uh, use a, a small shot immediately, but uh, without uh, protection, or risk uh, his life creating uh, a shield and ultimate, ultimately even taking more time to create plasma to destroy enemy shields or doors. So somehow this became the building blocks to different types of gameplay. After designing my weaponry, I needed to develop, to develop exploratory notions. Everything up to this point was on a single level. On a single level on the screen, I mean. But I felt limited. Having several stages in a game screen would bring more tactics and puzzles. But the difficulty was to create character animation and collision uh, on stairs. How could I do this with little effort? I was thinking of a real elevator, but another idea came. Why not create a kind of teleporter to switch from level to level just by drawing a few uh, vertical uh, polygons uh, in Leicester's color. I realized that I could create a very nice impression of motion, something that was inspired by, inspired by Japanese uh, manga animation, in which we get an impression of high speed movement just by uh, stre stretching lines. This is the end of the, of the J level where the body and Lester are separated. At this point, I realized that I couldn't let, let him go without finding him again. I felt attached to him. Okay. <clears throat> I only did one third of the game. And at this rhythm, I would, I, I would have two more years of work, which was really depressing. From that point, I decided to work more. 
and to not get lost in details. Some backgrounds were more flattened. So I got organized and created a set of graphic blocks I could reuse to create detailed backgrounds faster. From that point, I focus, I focus more on puzzles, creating variations using the building blocks I had at my disposal. And each time, uh, I was trying to bring a new idea. The friend became the center of a story with a succession of twists where Lester and his friend help each other. I never wanted, at the beginning, to create a game about the, rush, the relationship between two strangers. But the improvisation led me naturally to this. Producing is a source of inspiration in itself. Then I extended the use of parallel action to the foreground. Here, when, uh, when the player leaves the jail, we can see the, the frame being uh, chased by guards in, in the foreground. This has the same effect as a close-up, but without uh, breaking the player's activity. On the first level, I discovered the pleasure to, of modulating the pacing. But now I was playing around with it. For example, uh, to modulate the pacing, I used, I used laser beams to give different rhythm, enabling me to modulate the tension a little bit uh, like music score. Here is a, an animation with five frames. And the laser beam comes from the foreground, giving the impression of a raging battle. Ha ha ha. Okay. Publishing. It was time to see if a publisher would be interested in the game. I met Delphine Software, who were interested, but I wanted to meet another publisher, which was, in fact, the French headquarters of Virgin Games. Here was a major fork during the creation of a game, the moment where another world could have changed drastically it could have become a point and click. It was, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love point and click. And uh, the, so the editorial director said, if you want to make it a hit, make it less difficult by transforming it to a point and click. So it was the golden era of this kind of game. 
And uh, as always, being uh, full of love, uh, he almost conv convinced me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Future Wars, uh, the previous game uh, I did, was a point and click. I love point, point and click, as I said. However, I don't like doing things twice. And the effort to convert it would have been too huge. Also, some friends who played the game really loved it. So I maintained my direction. Yeah. And finally, the game was published by Delphin Software, where, who were not an international pub publisher, but were fully supportive of the creation. They trusted their game creators and uh, were not intrusive into the design process, which was rare and extreme, extremely valuable. <sighs> time, to think, time to think about the end. How would I, would I conclude the game? I didn't know. And at this point, I had an agreement for its release in November. I had done three quarters of a game. And, uh, and um, it was, uh, yes, it was really the time to, uh, to, to step back and review the, the overall pass, pass, passing, pacing, how I wanted it to evolve to the end. So the idea was to envision the finished game so as to balance uh, the later stage with the rest. I drew uh, a curve of all uh, major past events and activity uh, for the player and decided to play with con contrasting situa situations and change of pace, which led uh, to the, to, the, to the arena scene, and which led to the, uh, uh, an, an up and down uh, 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 rhythm. So. And yes, I, um, the, the cover illustration, uh, I, have, I have tales to tell about this. Uh, throughout my career, cover illustra illustration has been a major issue and a huge source of disappointment. I always consider the cover as the continuity of a game. And it's the first, as it is, the first bond between it and the player. The publishers of my previous games had the habit to impose artwork on me. Like this, or this, or even this. <laughs> well, those games were particularly bad, by the way. <laughs> Over the years, I'd become passionate about illustration to the point that uh, I actually wanted to become an illustrator. So, for another world, I didn't want to miss the opportunity of doing it myself. Being published by Delphine Software was fortunate. They were fine for me to create the cover illustration. But doing this while creating the game was really difficult as I, already, as I was already under pressure to finish the game for Christmas. It took me three weeks that, quite honestly, I didn't have. One of the big issues for the first release in 1991 was the lack of playtest. Delphine Software were not doing a lot of playtesting play testing at the time, and we had only two test sessions. And that was for the beginning of a game only. I fixed some major issues, but the game was really unbalanced. 
Later, when Interplay became the US publisher, they did a lot of playtesting. And the game under, underwent a second polishing. I fixed a lot of bugs and removed some, some sources of frustration. However, they asked, me, they asked me to make the game longer and some parts became more difficult. <sighs> okay. Interplay wanted to replace the original music used on the Amiga version with uh, new music for the Super Nintendo. I, and I disagreed. This was a serious source of conflict as they were doing the porting for the game, and the situation drove me totally crazy. The music matched so well the, vu the visuals. This led to a big transatlantic fight by fax, <laughs> la lasting, lasting several weeks. And after ex exchanging a number of faxes, I decided I'd, I'd use a new strategy. This consisted in sending an infinite fax. <laughs> what an infinite fax. It's a long strip of paper where the beginning is stuck to the end using an adhesive strip. <laughs> such, <laughs> such, such that it loops around the fax machine <laughs> endlessly. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, I sent it in the dead of night in Los Angeles. <laughs> so you could imagine their surprise when they arrived at work in the morning and found reams of paper <laughs> repeating the message, the message, keep the original intro music. <laughs> this didn't help. They didn't change their mind until Delphine Software got involved and said that legally they had no right to impose their, uh, their choice of music. And the discussion was closed. Mm -mm. Having a game on console had its own constraints. One of these was censorship. Another world could have ended up in a sex shove. Yes, there is an extremely uh, awesome future in nudity. So you get the, the drift. The alien women were totally naked. And here is the cause for concern. <laughs> The butt crack was too explicit. <laughs> so I considered, I considered using another infinite fax with the message, keep the original crack on the alien ass. <laughs> <laughs> However, the, the console manufacturer gave me no choice. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't send the, the fax. <laughs> so. So to limit the change, um, I had to remove only these three pixels to suggest a bathing suit. <laughs> At the end of the development, I was exhausted. And this is probably the reason Lister was almost dying in the end.
Okay. So, thank you. Um, we have seen the whole process from the origins to the finished product, how improvisation process was important in the creation of this game. And uh, I, I didn't talk about the music and, and the sound because the timing was too, too short. Uh, well, the game has uh, lived uh, on longer than I origin, origin, originally thought and uh, has been released on, ma on many platforms. So I have a little surprise, as uh, this is the 20th anniversary, uh, um, the, the game uh, will be brought to I iPad. So. So, yes. it, there is a little uh, prototype uh, here. So, and uh, now, uh, if you if you have uh, any question, uh, well, I we I I, uh, I really want to to answer to, to to your question if you have. So. Ma Mario is coming uh, to help me to, uh, to, 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 to answer. He, he will translate your question in, in French. And, uh, if needed. Yeah, if, okay. So, do you have any question? I've got one. Yes? Right in front of you. Hey, I'm, I'm Ryan from Untold Entertainment, and this was a really inspirational game. That your talk was awesome. This is awesome. So uh, I understand, uh, you know, you had no involvement uh, in the sequel. Um, if it were up to you, would you have made a sequel? And if so, what would you have done with the story from that point? Um, <laughs> So uh, you're, you're talking about Art of the Alien, yeah. right? Uh, I had a very uh, short uh, involvement. J'ai été très peu impliqué. I was very little implied in this. J'ai juste donné le, le concept initial qui était de rejouer Avec, uh, we only gave the initial concept, which was to play again with, avec l'ami, with with a friend, et de de voir uh, juste le jeu sous une autre perspective. And look at uh, the game under another viewpoint. Mais au, au delà de ça, j'ai pas été, j'étais en train de créer uh, Heart of Darkness à ce moment-là, donc j'étais assez. In that time, I was I was busy creating Heart of Darkness, and I, I remained uh, rather distant from this sequel. So. Euh, salut, je parle français, donc ça va aller assez rapidement. <laughs> ok, moi, il va falloir traduire en anglais après. <laughs> oh, oui, euh, traduire, là. Euh, je veux savoir ce que tu penses du remake qui, qui, qui a été fait euh, récemment de. de He's asking what what he, what uh, Mr. Shahi thinks of the remake that has been but made recently. Which uh, remake? Well, there, there's a uh, like special edition or anniversary edition or something that just the 3D stuff. No, <laughs> I haven't seen that. <laughs> it's, on, it's on the web. Ah yeah. yes, uh, I, I have been uh, involved uh, in it. Yes. Okay. And, uh, so uh, uh, I think it's. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm happy with this. <laughs> okay. Um, hi. Um, so, um, from what you said, it seems like the game was kind of your diary you wrote at the time. And uh, how do you think the game would change if you were to design the whole process from start to finish at the beginning, actually? You know, um, you kind of do it on the fly. Donc, euh, quand vous l'avez créé, ça a été fait par petits morceaux mm. et sans savoir exactement ce que vous c'était comme un journal. Mm. Bon, ben, si vous recréez le même jeu ou un jeu similaire, 
mais avoir tout déjà planifié au début. Comment est-ce que vous pensez vous okay. The game will be different. <laughs> really different. And, uh, je pense que typiquement uh, I think that typically ça, uh, on, uh, ne, ne pas entrer rapidement uh, dans la création dans vraiment uh, wouldn't enter immediately in the creation uh, ça, ça implique uh, beaucoup d'énergie uh, dépensée dans, uh, dans de la théorie dans, dans du design that means using a lot of, of the energy in theory, in theory and in designing Et, je pense que c'est euh, une, une bonne chose de, de, de chercher des idées au travers de l'expérimentation. Et vouloir tout figer. Or through experimentation and to, to want to, to, to freeze everything. C'est dangereux. Is dangerous. Okay, thanks. Hi, I was. Um... <coughs> I was wondering uh, what other uh, sci-fi inspirations you had or fantasy novels or movies that you were interested in when you were making the game? Um, I have been influenced by uh, comics. And, uh, in, in notablement, uh, par, uh, y a un artiste qui s'appelle uh, Richard Corben. And especially by an artist who's called Richard Corbin, qui, qui dont, dont les bandes dessinées m'avaient marqué, whose uh, comics had really had an, made an impression on me. Et plus généralement, uh, toute l'illustration fantastique, uh, comme uh, and more le, generally all fantastic illustrations. Le travail de Michael Whelan, de, uh, de Michael de, de Whelan, Frank Frazetta, Don Mays, Frazetta. Bernie Wrightson. Bernie Wrightson. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, that's the main uh, inspiration. Uh, hello. hello. Oh, hello. You want to go? Could uh, Could you please speak for just a moment about the sound effects creation? Yes. Um, toute la partie sonore est arrivée assez tardivement. Uh, the, whole, the, the whole sound part arrived rather late. Ça a été fait dans les six derniers mois. Uh, that all was done in the last six months. Et ça s'est fait assez, assez facilement et uh, j'avais vraiment une approche assez... Uh, it was easy enough and I approached it assez, assez minimaliste, uh, in a minimalist way. Où je voulais vraiment qu'il y ait les, les bruitages essentiels. Uh, qui étaient, uh, I just wanted the essential noises. Et là où c'était plus, plus compliqué, c'était sur la musique. Parce que j'avais... Uh, j'avais une vision assez claire de ce que je voulais dans ma tête, mais... Je n'arrivais pas à le traduire euh, par Because des mots. I knew what I wanted in my head, but I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't able to, to, to translate it easily. Et du coup, Jean-François, euh, Jean-François Freitas, le compositeur, euh, il a beaucoup. Jean-François Freitas, the composer, uh, il a, that moment. Il, il a itéré, il, donc il a itéré pendant six mois <laughs> autour de proposer diverses choses régulièrement. Uh, kept uh, proposing uh, different solutions. Regularly. Et à un moment, paf, ça s'est, euh, ça s'est cristallisé. And uh, then came a moment where everything uh, fell into place, crystallized. Et so. euh, le, à partir du moment où on a mis cette, euh, donc sa, sa musique, euh, cette musique, enfin la, la perception de l'introduction, par exemple, au début du jeu, elle, From elle the a moment changé. we started with his music, les, especially in the introduction part, les personnes qui connaissaient l'introduction sans le, the sans, feel sans of it musique. changed completely. Oui, ça a, ça a complètement changé donc euh, la perspective. Voilà, voilà. Et du, is, is, uh, j'ai répondu à, à ta question. Ou... Uh, did I answer your question or? Yeah, thank you. Makes yes with the head. Uh, hello. Um, first, I just want to thank you for creating the game. It is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, 
A question was asked of you earlier about your inspirations. I want to kind of reverse that a bit. I know a number of games have been made after Another World that seem to have drawn clear inspiration from it. Uh, specifically, specifically, a lot of comparisons have been made between Another World and Flashback. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts about these comparisons or if there are any other games you could think of that uh, seem to have drawn inspiration from yours. Could you repeat your last sentence? Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, I was wondering if um, there were, uh, in addition to Flashback, if you want to talk about that, uh, if there were any other games that you feel have kind of drawn inspiration from Another World and ah. any comments you might have about that. Okay. Est-ce que vous connaissez d'autres jeux qui ont été inspirés par Another World? Qu'est-ce que vous pensez de cela? I know, uh, I, I know that uh, Eco was uh, inspired by another one because uh, uh, Fumito te tell, tell it. I, 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 okay. mm -hmm. En fait, ce que je veux, ce que je veux dire simplement, c'est que le, uh, uh, je, je, say, je sais, il uh, y a des jeux qui ont été influencés par Another World, mais je me suis pas dit. Ah tiens, mais quels sont les jeux qui ont été influencés C'est plus les créateurs qui l'ont dit eux-mêmes. Différents jeux ont été influencés par ça, mais je n'ai pas vraiment regardé et identifié ça ou listé ça. C'est plus les créateurs des jeux qui ont dit ça. Et c'est vraiment, enfin, ça m'a fait vraiment euh, plaisir de, de voir. Et c'était vraiment un plaisir de voir ça. Que le jeu a pu influencer euh, d'autres gens. Que ce jeu peut influencer d'autres gens. J'aurais jamais imaginé ça, en fait. Euh. I never, I, I never have thought of it at the start. Thank you. Hello. Um, yes. First of all, amazing talk. Um, uh, your game and, you know, just you as a person is a great inspiration to myself and everyone in here, I'm sure. Um, I was wondering your thoughts on um, games as a form of artistic expression. Uh, Another World comes up a lot as an example of this, how games can transcend the traditional... Oh, you can't hear me too well? Can't get really. Could you come closer yeah. to that mic? I was just wondering um, <laughs> your your ideas on uh, games as a form of artistic expression, because another world always comes up when people talk about games as art. So I was wondering what you thought about that. Donc, vous pensez sur sur le jeu comme une inspiration en général, parce que chaque fois qu'on, enfin plusieurs fois quand on discute de the rule, another world uh, are even on a conversation. Okay. And I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if you can see this. I don't have that impression that it's uh, that important as an inspiration. It's. I don't know. Je suis vraiment focalisé sur la, la création et. Euh, et euh, I'm more focused on creation. J'ai vraiment pas le. Enfin, je peux. C'est. Enfin, j'ai non. Je suis désolé. J'ai rien de plus à ajouter. I don't, I don't have that much to say about being an inspiration. Uh, hi Eric, thanks for the great talk here. Yeah. Hi. Um, can you tell us from your point of view? Uh, which version you feel it's the best, and if it will be the iPad version, please tell us. <laughs> uh, well, the iPad version is not finished yet, so <laughs> I don't know, but the, the, the version that was uh, released uh, uh, five, five years ago uh, was, uh, had, uh, we, it was possible to play, to play, uh, to play it uh, uh, in, low, in low resolution uh, or with uh, more uh, enhanced graphics. So I think it is, it, it is the best uh, version that uh, has been released uh, because uh, before uh, in the Amiga a, a level was missing and uh, on the, the console, Super Nintendo, it was uh, less, uh, well, less, uh, more maniable, uh, oh, yeah. less playable. Uh, yeah, it was less manage less manageable. So, but the, uh, yes, the iPad uh, version uh, will uh, looks uh, really really nice. So we will see.
C'est fini Ok. Merci. Merci beaucoup.